Hi all, welcome to clickshare.com. Today let's explore how to use subfield function in ClickView. I'm sure most of you like subfield function. This function works in both ClickView script and also as part of the expression language. Subfield function is one of the string manipulation functions available in ClickView. However, this function is used more often than the other string functions. So let's get started and let's understand more about subfield functions. So let's understand a few points about subfield function. This function falls under string and text category. As I've mentioned earlier, this is more like a text manipulation or string manipulation functions. And then this function can be used in UI and script, returns the substring from the larger string or a variable. The first parameter of the subfield function is the string where we wanted to perform the search. And the second parameter is a delimiter which breaks the string from the first parameter. And the third parameter is the position of the result or string from the search. So you would say what position of text or substring you wanted. That will be your third parameter. And remember, you can also use the negative position number to extract the string from right hand side instead of left hand side. So where to use subfield function? To avoid complicated usage of functions like len, right, left, mid, these kind of functions. And also uh, multiple subfield functions in the same load statements results in Cartesian product of all the combinations, it will be really useful to generate the Cartesian product. And also very useful while working with strings along with dollar sign expansion. So let's look at some practical examples on how we can use subfield function. So let's get started. Let me go to click view. So here, let's look at two simple examples on how we can use subfield functions. In the first example, let's look at a simple variable where I have a massive string and I wanted to extract only the substring of the uh, parent string. So let's look at the variable which contains the string. So this con contains some information. It's like your IP address, folder one, folder two, folder three, and then click few files. It's more like your file path. And let's say that you wanted to extract folder three or folder two, whatever you wanted to extract, you can extract using the subfield function. And your delimiter will be your backslash in this case. So let's go back and let me add a text box. And uh, now I would say subfield. If you see here, there are three parameters. First parameter is the text, which is your full string, which can be a hard coded text or it can be a variable or a dollar sign expansion, or it can be another expression like a concat function. And then the second one is the delimiter. So in this case, the delimiter is the backslash. And then third parameter is the field number, which is what is the field position or what is the string position you wanted to extract. So let's use the variable name, which is v my variable. And then I would use uh, backslash, backslash. And then I would use number three here. Let's press OK. So we're getting the IP address. So let's go back and see why are we getting IP address in number three position. If you see here, I have two backslashes and then the third one is my IP address. If I remove this, it will go to the folder name. Perfect. So if I go back, so now that I've removed one backslash, it is going to the folder one. If I remove this as well, it will go to folder two. So I, that's pretty straightforward. So let me go back and add those backslashes just so that it's consistent. Okay, so let's go back and uh, we are back here. So we have IP address. So you can say I, you wanted the next bit, which is four, or the next bit, which is five, so on and so forth. You can extract whatever you wanted from the full string. Now let's look at how to extract using a negative number. In this case, I would say minus one. And let's go back and look at it. Now looking at the string, the expression is evaluated from right to left instead of left to right. 
So the first bet is April underscore 2013 dot QEW. So it's returning that particular substring. Now let's go ahead and change this to minus three. It should be click few files. Oops, sorry, which is applications. So it's first bit, second bit, and then third bit. This is the fourth bit. So it's pretty simple to use and very, very effective when you wanted to do string manipulations. Now let's look at one more example where we will see on how to generate a Cartesian product. So let me go to script editor and uh, I have some sample data as an Excel file. So I'll say uh, 60. And then if you look at the data here, I have customer numbers and then I have the zip code which are like which are separated by comma and then I have a project name which are again separated by commas. So now if I go ahead and click on finish and click on reload, click on OK and let me move this here and let me add the table box. And here I would select uh, the same order. So now if you're looking at it, you have customers and then you have projects and then you have your zip code. However, this may not be really helpful when you're trying to analyze more on zip codes or on the project because they are comma separated. So let's see how we can expand this whole thing so that you will see a Cartesian product of all the combinations. So let's go to script editor. And uh, let me manipulate this using the resident load. So I would say no concatenate because we don't want to concatenate the two tables. And then say load. And now here I would say customer will be customer will be customer. And uh, then one zip when the zip will be subfield. And the delimiter in this case here is comma. And I would call this again. Zip and then here zip again and then I would use this as project and uh, the delimiter again is the comma. I don't need to specify the field position, it's an optional parameter. And uh, then I would say project and then uh, let's call this table as test and this will be the final table. So this will be resident load test and then I would say drop test. Oops, drop table test. Save the script, run it. Now look at it. So it kind of removed all the commas and then it's expanded into multiple rows as a Cartesian product. There are multiple places where you can use subfield function and it's a very, very useful function. I hope this helps. I would encourage you to participate in ClickView question of the day where I ask ClickView questions and you can answer them to assess your ClickView knowledge. You will see instant results and you can compare with other developers or designers. Thank you for watching. Take care. Cheers.